Hey, you're watching Vinyl for Miles, your best resource for music and audio gear reviews. Today we're checking out this awesome bass. This is the San Dimas Pro Mod PJ5 bass from Charvel. Stick around. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today's focus is on this awesome bass from Charvel. This is a five string. It is the San Dimas Pro Mod PJ5 bass. Now you're gonna ask yourself, why am I making a video about a bass that came out a few years ago? There's a few reasons behind that. One, I couldn't find an in-depth review on this bass to the level that I was looking for on YouTube when I was searching to buy one. And second, the resale value on these has dropped significantly. Even open boxed, like new, refurbished bases are going for three to 400 under MSRP, and you can grab one of these for around six to $700 right now. Why is that a big deal? The MSRP on this is 1,099 for the five string and about 999 for the four string. Now I've had this bass for about three months. I've recorded with it, I've played with it, gigged with it, and there's all kinds of rich value that comes in this bass you're not gonna find at this price point. And I've been extremely pleased with what I got out of this bass for what I paid. Now, full disclosure, I paid $6.99 for this bass. Unfortunately, when it was shipped to me, the nut was chipped and the truss rod was stuck. I got $150 in credits back. I took it to my luthier. I took that 150 and said, please fix the bass. He did, truss rod works just fine and he fixed the nut. So this thing is back in new condition. It plays great and he even leveled the frets for me because I'm sure this thing was sitting for quite a while. It was B stock. So I'm only out 699 for this bass, which is crazy because it's practically brand new. All right, so now that I went over why I purchased this bass and the awesome value you can get for them now, why don't we go over some of the specs and the appointments that come on the bass. So starting off with the most obvious feature, you're gonna see that iconic headstock. Now this looks like a Fender headstock. It is a Charvel, I believe they're owned by Fender, but if you look on the back, there's a sticker that says it's officially licensed and they have full approval to use this headstock shape on all of their San Dimas Pro Mod bases. So the second feature that's gonna really stick out to you is the baked maple. So your headstock, your neck, and your fretboard is caramelized baked maple. That is what they're calling it on Charvel's website. It looks stunning in person. They're also using mother of pearl inlays on the actual fretboard when you're looking at it. So it's a little bit subtle. It's not like the black sticking out in your face. It looks really classy. And when you flip on the side, you get a modern appointment here with the Luminlay side dot inlays. So these are gonna glow in the dark while you're gigging. If you're in a dark room, you can get one of those mini black light flashlights and charge this thing up before you hit the stage or just use your phone's flashlight to charge it. In any condition, you're gonna be able to see your fret markers and not get lost while you're playing a gig, which is great. That's usually only featured on Custom Shop USA models. So moving over to the back here, we have the speed profile neck from Charvel, and this is the five string version. It's very apparent uh, when you're playing the five string because how wide it is, how thin this neck is. It's a super fast neck. It has rolled edges. It's very smooth. The fret work on this is amazing. There's no sharp fret ends. We do get a tusk nut on this and it does have 20 frets and this is a 34 inch scale base. Now we have open gears on the tuning pegs here, very classic. And moving down to the bottom, we have the heel mounted truss rod adjustment. And going to the body, we have that classic body style here. And it is in a metallic black flake paint job, which looks stunning in person from different angles. This base can look like it's gray, it can look like it's blue, or look like it's black. All right, so moving down below the neck, we're gonna go into the pickups here. So it does come with a DiMarzio pickup, and on the five string, you get a custom Charvel pickup. So the DiMarzio pickup is going to be an Area J DP551. And the custom pickup we're gonna have in the middle is a Charvel's five string split coil P. And this bass can go anywhere from modern metal all the way to blues to jazz. It pretty much can do anything. Speaking of the modern features, it does have a three band active EQ. So this is an active bass. If you flip it over on the back, you do have your nine volt battery cavity here, which is just a pop out, which is something I love. I hate 
basses and guitars that have the screw in kind where you have to unscrew it to put a damn battery in there. All your active electronics come in this cavity here. And here is your layout that you get. You do get a master volume. You get your pickup blend. So all the way to the right goes to the bridge, all the way to the left goes to the middle. And you do have a three band EQ. So you'll have bass, middle, and treble, or bass, mid, and treble, whatever you wanna call it. Cool thing about all of these knobs is they lock in place at the center point. So with your pickup selection, if you wanna find your middle without even looking, it clicks into place, you know exactly you're in the middle. Same thing with the three band EQ. If you're on stage, you're lost, the EQ sounds messed up, you can always flip these back to noon and the lock into place, it's great. There's one feature that's built in I love, which is if your battery dies, or if you want to just have some classic sounds out of this and bypass these three knobs, or if you're a beginner, you don't wanna mess with this EQ, pop out your volume knob, completely bypasses any active electronics in this base and it goes straight to the pickups. You can still use the pickup blending knob here to get between the two, but if you want the raw tone without any of the modern features, just pop your volume knob out. This is a very 80s classic neck joint. It's pretty hard, there's a stop here, it's not contoured, and there's no transitional carve at all, so just keep that in mind if you're a type of bass player that wants something that's transitional towards the neck and the upper register, you're not gonna get with this. It does have a throwback of a four screw um, neck plate on here, which is a throwback to the 80s, it does say Charvel, has your serial number, and this space is made in Mexico. It's not USA made, uh, but it's close enough, it's still in North America, and it's made in the same factories that Fender makes their made in Mexico gear. All right, so that is all the appointments and modern features and the classic look of this bass. Um, so why don't we hear what it sounds like with the sound demo? All right, guys, so I have it hooked up. I'm going directly into Pro Tools and I'm using one plugin. I'm using the Bass Forge Hellraiser plugin. I believe it was developed by Pantera's bass player. So while this plugin is uh, geared towards hard rock and metal, you can use it for a lot of different stuff. I'm doing a 810 cab. Uh, it's simulating an 810 Ampeg cab. All right, so uh, we're gonna start off. I'm gonna play the same bass line a few times and start changing settings. So we're starting off with the out of the box. Here's what the bass sounds like plugged right in with a brand new battery. Now with the pick. All right, so now we're gonna go through with the three band EQ all at noon, and I'm gonna go straight to the bridge. So let's play that same bass line now on the bridge. All right, now we're gonna switch it all the way to the neck pickup, or not neck, pardon me, the middle pickup. There is no neck pickup on this bass. All right, so now this is with the active electronics completely bypassed, I'm in the middle, so it's a pickup split. All right, so now we're gonna go all the way to the bridge. This is just the bridge in bypass mode. Now let's go all the way to the neck. This is the neck in bypass mode. All right, so now we're gonna go through the active EQ on this bass. All right, so here we go. We're gonna crank the bass. We're gonna turn the bass in the middle. So here's what it sounds like in the middle. Okay, we're 
We're gonna turn the bass down now. It's about a quarter of the way. All right, now here's the bass all the way down. Okay, now we're gonna start turning the bass up. So this is going to be a quarter of the way up. This is the bass all the way up here. You're gonna to have to accommodate by turning your volume down, otherwise you're gonna blow out your speakers. Pretty big difference, you know, a little turn there, uh, it does a lot. Uh, just be careful. If you're gonna turn up your bass all the way, like I said, you could probably uh, you could probably blow your speakers. All right, so now let's go to the mids. All right, so we're gonna start with the uh, mids in the middle. Again, I'm putting my bass and the treble right at noon, so this is just the mids. All right, we're gonna turn the mids up. This is going to be the mids all the way up. All right, so now we're gonna turn the mids down. I really like that, that sounds sick. All right, and I'm gonna turn it all the way up now. Uh, and just for reference, here's what some slapping would sound like. I'm not very good at slapping, but I wanted to kind of show you what it would sound like if you guys are into that. All right, so let's move along to the treble. So the treble, again, this is gonna be the closest knob to you. Turning it down towards the floor, turns it down, and turning it towards you, turns it up. All right, so let's start off in the middle. Let's start a new riff. And I'm actually gonna go down to the low B on this one because I think it really sticks out a lot more. All right, so now we're gonna turn the treble down. All right, now we're gonna turn the treble all the way down. All right, now we're gonna turn the treble up a little bit, so a little quarter past the middle point. All right, and now we're gonna turn it all the way up. That sounds pretty cool, honestly, with the treble all the way up, but it might get a little peaky. I went through the basic pickup configurations with the active EQ turned on, turned off, showed you the basic sounds. So let's go to one of my favorite sounds and I'll play the intro riff. So what I like to do is turn the bass control down a little bit. I like to turn up the mids and turn up the treble a quarter of the way up. And I like to go more towards the middle pickup here. All right, so here's that intro song.
and that's it. All right, so there you go. That's how the bass sounds. I went over all the basic features, the basic sounds using the EQ. So what is my feedback or what are my final thoughts? So let's go over the stuff that I love. I love this three band EQ. A little goes a long way. You can shape your tone. You can get all kinds of mixed and matched tones on here. You can bypass it if you wanna go classic. There's all kinds of tonal options on this thing. So if you're a studio musician, if you record at home, or if you're gigging, uh, you know, bass player that has several genres in your set, you can accomplish all of that with this one bass. The neck on this feels amazing. The tone I get out of it, it absolutely thuds. Um, it cuts through the mix so you can get grit out of it. You can make it clean. I love the high mass bridge on this. This thing is solid, has tons of sustain, and it's very easy to work on. So what did I not like about the bass? So something you're gonna find online, and I'm gonna show you a quick video of what I'm talking about. Your active EQ electronics in here, all the wiring is not shielded. There's a shielding sticker put on the actual lid, but on the cavity itself, it's not shielded, which could lead to all kinds of noise, which we've heard a lot of people complain about online. There's a quick fix for that. Amazon sells shielding paint, or you can get shielding stickers, 15 minute fix. You could do it yourself, very easy. Uh, just be cautious, don't pull on the wires or don't unplug or desolder anything. All you have to do is pop your knobs out and just pull all the electronics up put the sticker down or the paint down and then put it back in after it dries and you're good to go. Um, the B can get a little floppy, a little saggy. Um, I prefer it a little tighter, which would have taken care of that if this was a 35 inch scale. This does come in 34, there is no 35 option, but if there was a 35 inch option, that is something I probably would have gone for. I do have really big hands too, so the larger scale, I, I wouldn't mind. But if you do put a thicker bass string on here, uh, you can go with extra heavy it would take care of most of that issue. And you can also either raise it up or just play a little softer when you hit the low B. If you're a player that's not really doing B standard heavy metal um, and you're just sparingly using the beat, you're not gonna notice this at all. And that's pretty much it. Uh, aside from that, I think this bass is a great value, especially if you get it for under MSRP right now. And the quality of the bass, how sturdy it is, this thing's built like a tank and the tones you can get out of it, 100% worth it if you can get a deal. All right, so that was the San Dimas Pro Mod PJ Bass. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below. What did you think? Uh, what kind of tones are you guys getting? What basses are you using? Is there any other gear you want me to check out? I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, I am Michael. Thanks so much for watching. See ya.